So here I try to pull my inner capitalist and think about this enterprise as uh, production, right? What, are, uh, what, what is the challenge, really? The challenge is we are, we scientists are sort of in the business of entertainment. We, you know, we manufacture a story, people read it or listen and forget. Uh, what we want is data and knowledge which is reusable. Uh, and currently, the way it works is the data is a satellite product. It's the paper. And the cycle of pr production is very long. You hug your data, you hide your data, eventually you push it through, and it takes two or three years before the data is out, and then sort of it's old and useless. Uh, so where we are today, I'm not the first guy to think about this. Governments created this giant data repositories. You cannot publish a good paper or even a bad paper without depositing all of your raw data into Gene Expression Omnibus, a bunch of other places. Uh, that's great, but it's kind of where data goes to die. Uh, it's very hard to use other people's data uh, in, in this present form. So where do we want things to move? Um, I am being uh, kind of egocentric here. I, I'm not trying to fix all of biology. I would like to fix this biology, biology of aging and longevity. All right, so first, we want to help acknowledge that this is the problem or one of the key problems. That's short-term goal. The medium-term goal is uh, create some formats and some mechanisms for data quality controls and standardization. Um, I think it's doable, it's not expensive, if we create the right kind of social engineering. Um, and the long term is paradise. When everybody believes everybody's data, it's all reusable, and we could derive more knowledge from incremental data. Uh, so what are private and public actions that would help? Uh, American government has this National Institute of Standards where my genome is the standard genome, as some of you know, and there is a standard liter and the standard meter and the standard this. So th this is the job for this institute. I just don't think they are funded sufficiently. I don't think that they want to take this job on. Perhaps there are powerful people in this audience to lobby these institutions. Uh, something that we are trying already, and other people as well, are pilot projects in creating this kind of low-cost federation solutions where you host some data and you do quality control. I presented some, some of those. Um, it's realistic, I think, to, to make more. Uh, and uh, we could do this kind of transitioning data from being a satellite product to being the main product. What do I mean by that? It's a little adventurous, but I think it's realistic. Uh, instead of uh, awarding grants for people to create entertainment in the form of papers, uh, I think that grants could be awarded to create data. Uh, why would people not produce just junk data uh, for the same reason they don't produce junk papers. I mean, they do. Uh, but there is reputation, right? There is reputation, this process evolves. And so what I'm imagining is you can apply for a grant. Uh, we better know who you are. And then uh, you do your experiments. You send us your samples. And we pay for mass spec proteomics, sequencing, genomics, whatever is it. We pay for it with our... Uh, people hosting the data in a standardized way, putting through the low-level analysis pipeline in a standardized way. Uh, so I uh, believe this is doable, and this would change uh, kind of um, how unifiable the data would become. Um, and that's what I call data token awards. So I guess I was a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, that's the uh, answer to question number four, so that's, uh, that's our baby. Question, comments, useful suggestions? Oh, let's pass Wait, the mic. Yep, I'll move, I'll move the mic. The wireless mic.
Uh, just really a quick comment. In Europe, there is, uh, for proteomics, they just had their meeting 11 of May. Um, they're trying to standardize the metadata and they're creating a data file format, which will be unique for all proteomics. And they're adopting that out from the genomics field and, and RNA field. And so the idea is if they succeed, um, it's called risk hiding, the, the file format. If they succeed, the next topic, the, the multi-omic clock, will be much more feasible because you'll have the same file format across omics. You suggest we cheer them? Or? Cheer them, connect with them, work with them. Other questions? Oh, here it is. <laughs> how, how, how fast is the type of data changing? Is that like, I just seen like mass spec, you know, they were doing data dependent analysis, now they're doing data independent analysis, and this is like, and then like, I don't know, in single cell data, you know, there's like, there's arrays and nobody wants the array data anymore, and, and now, and then it's like, single, you know, 10x, three prime, and oops, now it's 10x intracellular, and like, does data stay useful? That, so, so thank you. This uh, uh, this is a great question uh, in more than one way because I am not out of my depth here. I am well positioned to answer that. I am sort of a king of a very small island, uh, which is called uh, Xenopus. Xenopus is a kind of frog. Uh, bioinformatics. I create resources for a very small community of about 500 labs in the world who are interested in doing Xenopus science. So it's been a long time, maybe 15 years, and uh, the resources that we created, which are just atlases, at what stage of embryonic development this protein comes on, in which kind of tissue it comes on. And so it was done with all technology. It started with microarrays. The technology has evolved, but the value of data is not diluted because people who are, you know, get human patients with some kind of familial variant that they want to characterize, they could rapidly go find Xenopus homologue and see a lot about their gene with whether it's microarray or uh, you know sequencing. So uh, there. Qu quick question: How? In your wildest dreams, who leads such an initiative? Does the government lead? Does uh, a research organization lead? Do, do uni uh, academicists I, lead? I wish uh, there was a uh, player like F Foresight Institute that could uh, take care of such things, or maybe it's realistic to get a little bit of uh, funding to create small nonprofit organization where you know two people could kind of oversee the shepherd the community. There is a large community. I get flooded with emails from people who want to help curate the data, run experiments in flies and worms, do something, and there is no way to take all of this powerful nature, uh, all of this powerful, like, crazy force of nature and organize it. And so, right, that we need this mechanism. We somehow need this social engineering of the structure. Yeah, the, there are some effort, efforts in, in this area, of course, already. For example, NCBI, like NIH effort, or UK Biobank, or Nathan Shock Centers, where, which actually pay you, kind of give them a samples and they can do the omics. Uh, or um, Rejuvenome, for example, that's kind of a similar idea. So are you proposing to do it for particular projects? Because uh, otherwise it's going to be kind of duplicating efforts, but also might be just too big for, the, for our community. What's, what exactly, uh, like, the, the target? Uh, right, so I arrogantly call it a data cemetery because those are huge projects, very expensive, which take raw data and some of the derivative data, and it's hard to use. I'm not so interested in storing raw reads or raw spectra because those rapidly become irrelevant. I'm talking about derivative high-level data like Lifespan is just a bunch of numbers, very small, but properly formatted and annotated and dear to the hearts of our small community. 
Um, like, like what, for example, ITP program does. Yeah, they, they have a beautiful data on, on the lifespan of each mouse of the many thousand. So mice. ITP, uh, yes, has excellent web server where you can do many things. But what I presented, if you remember in the beginning, where I take a paper that extends lifespan, ask what is the control strain of mice and how did it do in other papers, you cannot do this currently in ITP. So. I, I, I'm talking to them about adding this sort of thing, but will they actually maintain this? I'm not sure. But yeah, I don't think it's hard to do. I don't think it's expensive. Maybe like the answer to your question, Vadim, would be radically open. You know, that's lacking in UK Biobank for right now, and in many other projects collecting data. Right? Radically open. That's the main point there. No. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, th so the ITP is is open, all right? The ITP data is open, um, but yes, radically radically open means instantly open before you publish, and that's certainly not part of ITP. Uh, 